deeper. There's not a, a better person, I think, to learn from uh, in terms of what he does in the London sessions, Tuesdays, <laughs> Thursdays, but in terms of what he's done in his trading career overall, this is someone who has traded and has compounded that growth for years now. And look at that beautiful view with the sunset and everything. I thought you said, look at that beautiful person. Okay. Person as well, man. Well, we are, we are grateful for you, brother. Thank you so much for, for hopping on tonight and wanting to deliver uh, some more knowledge, man. I'm going to make you a host. I'm excited to have you here. We're excited to have you here. You got people tuning in from, from Florida, from California, uh, from ac all across Canada as well. Uh, and we're excited to just learn, my friend. Awesome. And I definitely apologize for, for the delay, guys. I'm not, I'm not usually this late and everything, but I you know, everything. And you know how it is when it comes to balance. You know, I'm not actually going to be in this. Uh, is it cool if I give you guys like a quick tip on vibrations and frequencies real quick and tell you guys how powerful it is for divine acceleration? Is that cool? I don't know if there's some people on here and some people take the offensive. I really don't care. So um, <laughs> here's the thing. I have this tip for a lot of individuals and, it's, and there's, there's people and you can take this into trading, you can take this into business, you can take this into life that will run super, super fast and they get nowhere. Whereas another person could like make one foot in front of the other, just one step. And for some reason, everything happens for them. Have you guys ever seen those people before? Like you ever been like, how the heck that dude's way unqualified. I'm way better. You know what I'm I study more. You know what I'm saying? Like I read more books. I listen to more audios. But how come they're having more success? Has anybody ever experienced that before? Hey, Roman, yeah. this call. What's up, Roman? Have you guys experienced that? Yes, sir. Okay, so I figured this out. And what's crazy is that there's some trials and tribulations that have been happening in my life because I'm normal. I'm a normal human being, you know. Um, and I figured out that when bad things happen we tend to dwell in it, which then it consumes our mentality and it consumes our emotions, which then in return dictates our environment. So when bad things happen to me, rather than reacting, I respond based off a of principle rather than reacting off emotion, I do the exact opposite. So when I heard some weird news about some stuff and you know, financial you know, drop a little bit, um, I decided to go to Disneyland. <laughs> I did the opposite. <laughs> like, I tried something different. I was like, I'm going to go take my girl to Disneyland. And I'm going to California Adventures and experience something and act like nothing's wrong, which is crazy because that led to some exponential growth when it came to business. And then all of a sudden, I'm getting out. The reason why I like to give you guys testimonies for things is because then there's weight in our words. You know, a lot of people say things all the time, but there's no weight in the words because they have no demonstration of how they did it. And sometimes, just like I learned in church the other day, we need some divine demonstration. Well, I'm here to tell you guys that I'm super excited because I'm getting out of this place and I, I love the view. Okay. I love the view. It's awesome. And I, I, on August 1st, so July 31st, I got to be out. It's possible that I might be going to Chile to Ecuador the last week of July. So I needed a location to, to move to. You know, what's crazy is the fact that I said, everything's perfectly fine. Never had any worries about it. Guess what? I have horrible credit. You know what I'm saying? I have good proof of income. I don't know how I'm going to do this. I don't know how I'm going to find a guarantor. And then all of a sudden things happen. Within 24 hours, I found a location, got approved, brand new places, brand new. No one's ever lived there before. Eight weeks free. Then they give me $500. I can move in July 15th. I don't pay full rent till October. Then I pulled up my credit score to like look at my, my credit just to check. And guess what? Everything got closed. Like I'm not lying to you guys. Like all the accounts got closed. The things that I owed everything, it's like closed. And my credit score went up 24 points. Can anyone explain that to me? And all, all those things that happened, I'm talking about the place, the location, the eight weeks, the $500, the dupe stuff, the stuff that's happening in business and in the freaking the, the, the credit stuff and everything. And the reason why I'm saying this is because this all came after a season, like a week or two of uncertainty and self doubt and worry and fear. But I realized that if you worry, you doubt God's power. Divine acceleration is hundred percent there. It's just, you have to believe in this stuff too. You have to. Okay. So when I give you guys this training and everything, have that mindset, you know, don't ever talk about trying don't ever say that, I hope, like I was talking to him, he's like, yeah, I'm, try I'm trying to get to levels, you already are. You know, have this to the point where you have so much conviction and self-belief and it's crazy, okay? And the last thing I'm gonna say is this, 
frequencies are real because when I was in church yesterday, it was super emotional because they put up a picture. They said divine demonstration. They put up a picture of a guy who has gone through trials and tribulations and had a cut, two cuts on his leg. What's crazy is the fact that that was four hours after he came up to like this pastor and everything. And his pastor's talking to him and praying for him and telling him everything, everything's okay. But what's crazy is we don't command and demand things in our life. We don't say that I, I rebuke the evil in our life. Like I, I demand to not, you know, have this. Like I have abundance. I have health. I have wealth. I have love. I have perfect relationships. I have amazing trading record. All these things we don't. We focus on such money-making activities that we neglect the frequencies. But what's crazy is they showed another picture of what his leg looked like four hours prior. And it was just a whole bunch of cuts. And it said he cut into his skin, failure. Four hours later, it was healed. Now, I'm not saying this in, in, in terms of like to make you guys my dream on what, what I'm saying is the fact that within one second, nobody said anything. It was unspoken, right? Look at the picture. Joy and pride. How can, how can there be an unspoken words, right? How can there be unspoken words looking at pictures? How can the whole frequency of the entire room, how can all of us instantly cry because of how much like sadness that we feel from it? Do you know what I'm saying? So if our frequencies are that powerful when it comes to even just sadness and emotions and feelings and everything, think about how we actually take that, don't take that into context or into content context to apply into our trading stuff, okay? The reason why I'm saying this is very key and it's very important. I didn't start having massive success until I believed that I had success, until I believed that I already have it. And that's the first step when it comes to this because you could be on the charts, having paralysis from analysis, getting to that point, but I bet you guys at Hall said this before, maybe it's not for me. Man, this is difficult. How come I'm not accomplishing these things? Blah, blah, blah. Everything you say is true. Everything that you've been saying for the past weeks, for the past months, isn't it crazy that it's all true? So we have to change our words. We have to change the way that we, we break everything down. I'm being 100% transparent with you guys on this is because I had one of my buddies say some stuff about a leader launching. And he's like, I need him to do this and to do that. And like, we gave him the support. I said, stop, love unconditionally, benefit of the doubt and manifest success for that person. Be careful with your words and be careful with what you say. Be careful with what you feel because it will become a reality. Right? The moment we change, I guess, what he launched. So it's like, I'm here to show you guys that when it comes to trading and stuff like this, it's super simple. I'm going to give you guys the breakdown and the rundown. Yo, Matt, is it cool if I give like that same type of concept of training that I gave when I was there in Miami? Yeah, 100%, brother. Please do. Is that, is that enough? Yeah, yeah, please, bro. Okay, cool, cool. So I'm going to give you guys that, give you guys homework, applicable information that you can apply on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay. And there's a couple key things so that way I can maximize time on this. <laughs> I had a presentation. I did a presentation today is, um, I need you guys to go on to well, actually I'll do it for you. Okay. But there's a couple key things that a lot of people don't know about when it comes to, um, the stuff that I provide. Okay. If you go onto my YouTube channel, And you go on here, there's a couple of things that I want people to have, okay? I want people to have, number one, is this video called How to Profit Fast. Now, How to Profit Fast, I will go over, I copy this. Everything that you need to maximize your profits, like uh, for a lot of people all the time, they always talk about that they're losing from swipe trades, but there's a way to actually, I have people that are winning from it. I'll teach you guys, uh, teach you guys the rules that no matter what, no matter what, when you're 10 to 15 pips in profit, okay, when you're 10 to 15 pips in profit, you do a two pip stop profit, which I'll break that down in detail for anyone that doesn't know. Does anyone not know what a stop profit is? If, if you all do that, I'm not going to go over it. But in this, I'm teaching every single person that with proper risk management, okay, and I know this is the over leveraged king that you have on here, and as a mistake. I'm going to be 100% honest with you guys. I made a mistake. I made a mistake of posting those things because it's crazy that it could hurt a lot of people if they don't know what to do the right way, especially if a lot of people are leveraging the rest of their money. So think about this for a second. If you have $100 in your account, okay, and you're doing a 0.01 per 100, that means with a 20 to 30 pip stop loss, to 30 pip stop loss, is the equivalent of losing two to three dollars, which is the equivalent of risking two to three percent 
of your account. Okay. I'm trying to protect people here. And the reason being is because people, it doesn't seem attractive or sexy at first. You're like, ugh, <laughs> point zero one. You know what I'm saying? But let me ask you guys a question. Then you guys could write into the chat too as well. Can you, anyone write in a chat of how long that you've known about trading or been a part of trading? I just want to see the, the responses and the replies. This is gonna this is gonna trip you guys out, okay? How much would your account be right now if you did proper risk since the moment you started? Would it be a lot more than what's in your brokerage account right now? Okay. Now, the reason why I say this is because I know this from experience. So what I'm doing with you guys is I'm connecting a $200 account to FX Blue and I'm gonna be trading it consistently the right way on how to do this the right way. So that way you can see on what happens with your account after, okay? Now, for every, look at this, right? So 200, what is that, 0 0.02? Like you could do the math on that, 1,000.10. Now, the reason being is because you're averaging, let's say a thousand pips a month. Who here feels that you could average a thousand pips a month with, with my trading style or even just using you know, IML TV and everything? That's like, that's like baby pips. <laughs> a thousand pips, like we could do that. Like you could, you could hit that goal blindfolded, like for real, like especially with trend trading. If you're doing a thousand pips a month, that means you are doubling your account every single month okay now let's say you start out with a hundred dollar account for the first month where, where, where will you be in the sixth month let's do the math here okay because now i'm going to make it sexy to do proper risk you ready so 100 what happens the next month 200. Can everyone uh, mute themselves when you guys come in please thank you um third month is 400 okay fifth month wait what did i say is it fourth month Let's do this again. I'm gonna make sure this is right. 100, two. So second month, it's 200. Third month, it's 400. Fourth month, 800. Fifth month, 1600. And then the sixth month is 3200. So 3200 for the sixth month, okay? Now let's go to a year. So six month. Yes. 3200. Seventh month, eighth month, nine month, tenth month, eleventh month, twelfth month. Twelfth month, two hundred and four thousand eight hundred dollars because of twelfth month. And how many people have been trading for more than one year? Majority, correct? So what would your account be at right now if we just continue to do this the right way? Isn't that a crazy way to look at it? I just muted everybody. Okay. It's crazy. It trips me out. I'm just like, dude, why am I being such a douche? And he's saying like, why am I trying to be that person? Like, yes, I've experienced it. Cool. I got the upside of it because I put in the hours and everything into it, but I'm not saying that that's right. Okay. Chris Terry, every single time that I flipped huge, huge accounts, Chris Terry was mad at me. You understand why he was mad at me? I thought it's like the, it's like the dad that you're trying to get like approval from like, dad, come on, man. I made 50,000 today. <laughs> he's saying like, please be happy for me. Um, he's like, I'm not impressed. It's all about being consistent. Cause if I could make that, if I could make 50,000 in seven days from $187 account, that means I could lose it in seven days. That's just the mentality to have it, but you should be able to lose five out of 10 trades. Okay. You should be able to, Oh snap. What was the 12 month again? Oh, actually, yeah. You should be able to lose five out of 10 trades, okay? And say you lost, say you're risking 30 pips off each one, okay? 30 pip losses. That means you lost 150 pips, okay? Let's say even if you gain 50 pips off each one, 50 pip gains out of the other five. What is that, five, 250, okay? So let's say out of that week, what did you gain? You still gain 100 pips, right? So even if you have 
a 50% win ratio, you still benefited. Guys, the money-making activities of this stuff that I'm going to show you guys is super easy. Super easy. We'll get into the cool stuff. But to me, this is a lot cooler. And instead of being that person that says, just do it, I'm going to show you it. I'm going to show you exactly how to do it the right way. Okay? 100, pi 100 pips, $100, 0 0.01. 20, 30 pips stop loss, you're risking 2 to $3, 2 to 3% of your account. And if you have $1,000 of your account, you're doing 2 to 3%, you're risking what? 20 to $30 of your account. Right? First month, Doubling, 100, it's going to be six month, 3,200, 12 month, 204,800. Who would be upset that even after a year, you only got half of that? Like you got $102,400 for that year. Would, any be, would anybody be upset with that? And if you do, you are a greedy person. <laughs> you greedy. Nobody would be upset with that, right? Okay, cool. Awesome, 100 pip gain, 51 ratio. That's the whole main point behind this whole thing. I'm gonna take a picture of this so I can, can save it. Because I feel this is key. Now, how many people feel like crap now on the fact that you know this and you've been trading for two or three years? Because if I could say that I, I feel like crap, you better too. Humility is key when it comes to everything, okay? Humility is key. Humility, humility, humility. Okay, cool, cool. So everybody understand this part. Everybody good? Awesome. I'm just looking for feedback to make sure no one's like asleep. <laughs> awesome, cool. Let's get back to this. Now, is there anybody here that's like brand, brand new, like super, super basic? Okay, cool. Then you're at the right place. <laughs> it might not make too much sense to you at first, but I'd rather be that person that comes into this and plays against LeBron James. <laughs> Hopefully you guys aren't like bandwagon Lakers fan because I'm a true Lakers fan. Okay. But you get to learn and see how things work because if you come into this having process for analysis of studying multiple things, it gives you process for analysis. What I want to give you guys today is shortcut straight to the point of what it takes to um, profit within the markets. Super simple as that. Okay. Make sure you take that picture that I put in trading view. Now let's give an example. This is what I would do. Trend trading path of least resistance. Okay. Before we even show the charts path of least resistance, think of it like this. And I've, I use this metaphor all the time as a surfer. I'm not a surfer. I don't know how to swim. Okay. Whatever. <laughs> I don't know how to swim. But I watch how surfers are. I see what they do. And I've said this before at regional events, but if we could get this concept into our head, that's when everything changes. A surfer doesn't just stand up on the water and automatically start surfing. What they do is they wait. They wait patiently and they wait 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 for a wave to come. Now that wave equals what? Trade setup. We feel like all the times, every time that you're about to take a trade and you're not waiting for a trade setup, you're just going into it. Think about yourself standing up on a surfboard, trying to catch a wave where there's no waves and it's just flat water and you're falling down. Think about that, okay? Now what you do is you wait, wait for the trade setup, and then once the wave starts to come, do you paddle against the wave? No, you don't paddle against the wave. That's going against the trend. Don't ever go against the trend. How many of us have tried to look for reversals before? And you woke up, it either blew your account or it continued going into the direction that was going in the first place. How many times have you guys said, what, it was that obvious? I should have just shorted it. I should have just shorted it. I should have sold it. It was dropping. I should have just went with what was obvious. I should have just bought it. I should have just bought it. Like we've all been there. We've all been there, done that before. We just had to be self-aware. Mistake made more than once, not a mistake anymore. It's what it's a choice. Okay, so this is what I would do in order for me to get really good at trading. And it's gonna be cool because I'm gonna give you guys like five minutes of me marking up charts. Okay, because I don't like to just be that person that just says, just do this. Okay, is that cool? I can show you guys the exact homework of what to do. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scroll all the way to the front, okay? All the way to the front of a chart. What I'll do is I'll go through the trends on a, on a downtrend, which is going down. I'll look for all the areas that were the best for a sell position. On an uptrend, I'll look for all the areas that were best for a buy position. 
That's it. Okay. And I'll do that. I'll go from the beginning of the chart on a one hour time frame all the way until I got to the end of the chart. Then what do I do once I'm done with GBP USD, I go to GBP JPY. I was so psychotic, but the ones that are crazy enough to think they could do are the ones that do it. But I did this consistently over time or every single day. I could be having a conversation with you and it got so clockwork to like, I remember when Alex Moore first came into the business as you know, when he first came into IML, uh, we had five minutes before the London session, we're at a leadership meeting out here in Arizona, five minutes to just mark up charts in front of me. He said, how do you do this so fast? Repetition. Repetition is your reputation when it comes to this whole thing. So what I would do for myself, is you have to understand that, like I said, frequencies are very important when it comes to trading. So I used to be that person that just listened to a lot of like rap music or whatever. I changed my music up. And the way I changed my music up is I would list, play music that will keep me flowing and it will keep me going constantly. So what I do is I go to Majestic Casual, click on one of the mixes, or I'll click on play all for latest uploads and let all the music play. Now it's different for some people like, oh, it's not cool. The ones that think that it's not cool are the ones that's just insecure themselves because they care so much about the opinions of other people. But the truth is, how many of us would be different if we could actually be ourselves? That's a nugget. <laughs> so I'll play this, play music and just watch for a second. This one, Majestic Casual, or if you want a little bit more upbeat, I go to SoundCloud, okay? When I go to SoundCloud, I go to this thing called Bitbird Radio, okay? Where is that? Play this. Okay. Click on here and I'll click on like the newest ones. The newest one is 17. Is that one? Price to the left, broke an area of a floor, became a ceiling. Broke an area of a floor, became a ceiling. Broke an area of a floor, became a ceiling. That's how simple it was for the downtrend. You know, all to do is like, I'll see that price comes up, hits this area, broke this area, broke this floor, boom. Chris, what area of support do you look for for it to break and retest? Well, I have this thing called a crosshair. Every time I move this, you can see a vertical and horizontal line. Whenever I see it break an area, I look to the left, where's the nearest area of support that it broke? Right over here. When I did that, price came up, tested that support as resistance and dropped. Guess what's cool about this? You enter off this trade, how would you feel when the market opened right here? How many people would be happy when the market opened? Right there. And how much did it gap? Let's see, how much did it gap? That's an amazing gap, 209 pips. <laughs> Oh man, and that's how simple it was. Ceiling, I mean floor, ceiling, floor, ceiling, floor, ceiling. Now here's the crazy part. People ask me, Chris, how did you figure out on when it shifts the trend? Well, it's simple as this. It broke a floor here, became a ceiling. It broke a floor here, became a ceiling. It broke a floor here, became a ceiling. There's a floor here. 
Did it break the floor? It didn't break the floor at all, did it? No. So if the floor didn't become, if the floor is ceiling, floor is ceiling, floor is ceiling, floor did not become a ceiling, you are now looking for a buy position. You're looking for an area of where price could buy. Now let me give you an example of this point. Oh, I'm going to have to go all the way back. I wonder if it'll let me in a 15 minute. Did it? No? No, it didn't. Okay. I can't show you guys in the 15 minute because I scroll all the way back. It's too much. Okay, but anyways, oh look, I bet you in the 15 minute price broke an area here of, of the ceiling and became a floor or broke the ceiling and it became a floor, right? Now I see uptrend. Simple, this is what I'll do. I'm just giving you the commentary, like the, the commentary right now for the new people, okay? I'll look all these places where I could have got good entry that if you look closely here, there's like a wig here, but never really touched there, whatever. I wouldn't care about that. Where are the best entries? The best entries are areas of where price has literally little to no drawdown, which means when you entered the trade, it barely went negative before it went in profit. Those are my favorite trades. Who here likes the trades where it's like, as soon as you enter, it's like perfect. You know what I'm saying? I would have entered right here, to be honest. Can you guys hear me still? Okay, so this is how I'd have it set up right here. So if I go here, I look, okay, there's a level of support, level of support, level of support, level of support, level of support. Now, even if we just drew like this, look at this, and we didn't even draw the zone, look what happened, okay? Look closely here, area of a ceiling, floor, ceiling, floor, ceiling, floor. Ceiling, floor, ceiling, floor. This ceiling right here did not become a floor. The floor now became a ceiling. Floor became a ceiling, right? The floor did not become a ceiling. And what happened? The ceiling became a floor. The ceiling became a floor. The ceiling became a floor. The ceiling did not become a floor and it broke. Where did it break? Well, close area of a floor, retest, floor, ceiling. Floor, ceiling floor, ceiling, floor, ceiling, floor, nothing, floor, nothing. What happened? Ceiling, floor, ceiling, floor, ceiling, floor. Ceiling did not become a floor. The floor now became a ceiling. The floor did not become a ceiling. The ceiling became a floor. The ceiling became a nothing. Broke, floor, ceiling, floor, nothing, floor, nothing. Broke the ceiling, became a floor. Did not break the ceiling, broke floor, ceiling, did not break floor. Does everyone see how, the, the, how easy it is to like see the trend? Does everyone see that? That's, that's how I got it. I was, it was literally like, that was it. And when I was figuring that out, I was like, what the heck? You gotta be kidding me. I could just use a line, right? I could just use a line. Then I draw the zones as a visual representation. So does everybody understand what I would do when I look at the entries. If I see a good downtrend, I just keep drawing, you know, keep drawing. How much time did Kobe spend, you know, in the gym? Same thing. If you're talking more about trading and complaining about it, you're not drawing. I'm not having that much success. Then make it happen. Look, simple, ceiling, look, ceiling, look, you're right here, ceiling, look, ceiling, ceiling, ceiling. I'm going to the yellow circles, by the way. Ceiling, ceiling. Now let's look real quick. Okay, floor, ceiling, floor, ceiling, floor, ceiling. Let's look over here, in this one. Well, guess what? This was an area of where there's previous floors. Became a ceiling, floor became a ceiling, floor became a ceiling. Floor became a ceiling. Floor became a ceiling. The floor did not become a ceiling. You do not sell. You wait for it. Ceiling became a floor. The ceiling did not become a floor. Drops. That's how powerful this is. Super simple stuff, okay? Now, then people look into context like, Chris, what do you do when you, when you want to enter into a trade now? Okay? But what I like to do is I look to, like to look into what's been happening lately. Let's do this. 
price, floor broke, floor broke, ceiling floor, right? Ceiling floor, ceiling floor, ceiling did not become a floor. Floor is now a ceiling, floor is now a ceiling. So this is how, what my trade setup would look like. That's it. The nearest ceiling, the nearest floor. Then I draw my zone. When I draw my zone, I could use this one. Okay. So price is there. I don't know where it's going. I don't know what to do. Exactly. You're not supposed to know what to do. You're supposed to wait for it to reveal itself. It makes it shift downwards or everybody else tries to buy it because they think it's going to continue going up. You're the person that got it here while everybody else got it here and you got the real move. Okay. Guess who I learned this from? Like, oh, Chris, is this coming from you? How much weight in your words does it come to when, when you say it? Oh, guess what? I learned this from Chris for Terry. The correction and the real move. How do you officially scale in higher positions while riding the trend? Sometimes you might have the first position hit stop profit upon reversal and second higher position hit stop and end up a negative result. Can you break this down to the point where we lose the big words? I'm just saying that in, in terms of that, well, do the, the basic version of, of that. The reason why I'm trying to teach that is because we tend to put um, a crazy context to trading when all I use is something simple as ceiling floor, ceiling floor. What is the true issue without using efficiently scale higher positions? Like, are you talking about what happens when it hits your stock profit? Here, let's do this. My bad. How about you just uh, talk? So I can hear you. That way I can answer that question. Yo, yo, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, okay, cool. Uh, yeah, I was just learning from, uh, I was learning from your experience. Uh, I remember one time you flipped that, uh, you know, 187 to what was it, like 88 grand in a week and a half. Mm -hmm. I was just following it as well, position wise, when you got in, stuff like that. And I realized, so you entered one position at some point. Uh, when it was retracing, you put a few extra positions on a higher lot size, so you were scaling no, in. Don't do that. Don't do <laughs> two, two trades. You know what I mean? So Run. just twin trade from the beginning and ride that wave? Yes. Make a rule. 10 to 15 pips in profit, you do a two pips stop profit. Okay, cool. One of the orders, you do a 30 to 50 pip take profit. So that way while you're asleep, it can either hit your take profit or it hits your stop profit. You wake up, you have two things to happen. You either hit a two pip stop profit on both orders, or you wake up, you collected 30, 50 pips off one order by the time you wake up, and you wake up and you see that the move happened and you could trail your stop even higher. Make sense? Okay. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, because I was trying to scale in before, and then I would realize that my first position would hit stop profit and the second one higher lot size would hit stop loss and then it would be negative so yeah I was just wondering yeah i know what you mean okay, so, okay cool the two orders now this is what i give another tip that i could give to you, to you guys okay it is that when you have multiple charts pulled up okay as, as an example say for instance you have all these pairs pulled up You're like okay cool all these pairs pulled up everything but the one that's happening is gbp usd only take GBP USD. Don't look at anything else. The only time that you could enter into another trade or into another currency pair is the moment your stop profits are in place because now you're not risking anything in your account. I'm not saying to not take multiple pairs. I'm just saying do not take a trade or risk anything else unless your other two trades on twin trading has a two pip stop profit. Does that make sense? Cool, cool. It saves everything. I figured out that trading truly is about maximize profits and minimize losses. Okay. So I'm showing you guys the relevancy of the homework. Make sure you guys do the homework, but I'm showing you guys like what's happening currently as we speak. So what I'll do is wherever price is currently at, it's just, I just do zones, man. Like 
people ask me, Chris, why did you stop doing trend lines? Because it keep giving me a weird bias opinion to where like price could go to. And then you look at another trend line and how many times have you guys ever dragged a trend line just so that it hits that area so you could take the trade and you realize that it goes up more, it goes down more. <laughs> Has it happened before to anybody? <laughs> I hope so. Like, I'm just gonna pull this trend line down a little bit. It's cool. And then it goes up. I should just let the trend line there. I should just trust my instinct. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so now wherever price is currently at within that moment, it's like floor, ceiling, floor, ceiling, floor did not become a ceiling or ceiling did not become floor. Then I'm just literally doing this. Now, the reason why it's so easy for the trade setups now is because I've studied so much into the past that say if I have these two trades, whichever one is good, it's one of them is gonna happen, okay? Look at this. Can anyone tell me, was this a good trade, anybody? <laughs> what did I do here? This was from London session last week. What did I say? Ceiling, floor, or floor, ceiling? How many pips was this, guys? That was 186 pip potential. It would've hit your stop profit here, and you would have floor ceiling, you would enter in short position. You got your 30 to 50 pips, two pips stop profit, would hit your stop profit. And when it hits your stop profit, you put an area of resistance and an area of support and wait for it to break. Make sense? If you're looking at this in detail on the 15 minute, look how price did. Look how price said he broke this resistance here and then became support. But the thing is, nobody's willing to be patient enough to wait for that to happen. Make sense? Like it, it all happens. One of the trades is gonna happen. Everybody see this? Price broke, boom, comes across. Yes, you could have entered here, but let, let, me, let me teach you guys something real quick. You ready? Say if you enter off this trade off your odd, and this is your entry here. Did you know that a 20 to 30 pip stop loss is this range right here? So if you're risking two to 3%, it never went down to your 30 pip stop loss, and it continued moving up, and the moment that it is retest, you could have entered again, because you would have had a two pip stop profit in place. Makes sense? So how many times have we trend traded if we had 20, 30 pip stop losses risking two to 3%? We could have been in the go. How many of you guys have been in positions where you guys have taken trades before, where price would come down, blow your account, and go back into the direction that was going in the first place? And you wish you had a better entry. But if you had a 25 to 30 pip stop loss with risking two to 3%, you'd probably still be in the trade. It happens probably more than 80 to 90% of the time, am I right? Am I right, am I right? Yeah, yeah. So here, easy trade, super simple trade. Look how simple this is. What area of resistance did it break? Right here. That's it. What am I waiting for? Price to come up into that area and to retest. What happens more often than not is this. People see double top wicked to this side. Let's, let's sell it. <laughs> how many people have, have traded market maker? when we first started, because it's the one thing that was going around that was free. Are you? Yeah. Isn't it trash? Yeah, it is. Isn't it 16 hours of just wasted time? It is, because everyone knows the same information. If we're studying the same information, no wonder. Yeah, dude. <laughs> now, the reason why this trading style is so good is because no matter how basic I can make this, because it is so basic, nobody wants to use it because like, it can't be that easy. So no one does it, it's weird. Like it's really weird. All I do is wait for it to go here. Have a trade set up for a buy position, 20, 30 pip stop loss, and that's it. When it starts going up, two pip stop profit, I go to sleep. So it's like, was it you that asked me about if I stayed up eight hours? I think so. Yeah, people always ask, like, dude, Chris has to be in the charts consistently, dude. Like he has to be on there like 25, eight, no, what I do is I have this on my trading view. I draw resistance, I draw the zone, I go onto my phone, I draw the same resistance and zone there, okay? And then throughout the day, if I'm just chilling or throughout the night, if I'm over there in the gym or like just chilling, talking to people, doing some business, doing some first development, I look at my phone. If it's coming down to that area and it starts closing, I take it. Two pip stop profit, boom, done. That was it. Like, two pip stop profit, set one order for 30 to 50 pips. That's, that's all it is. You know what I'm saying? So boom, 
but then someone's going to say, Chris, what happens if it continues breaking down? Then I do not enter unless it breaks a certain level of support, which is right here or any of these ones and comes up and tests it. And then I sell it. That's it. So here, I'll draw that up as well. So you guys can have it for yourself. I actually appreciate this call because you guys are letting me do all my work for a London session tonight. <laughs> so is anyone having breakthroughs from this at all? And the reason why I don't get like upset, I like reiterating the same information is because sometimes there's some, sometimes I've said this before, you hear things a hundred times, but it's the 101 time that changes everything that makes a big difference. You know what I mean? Okay, we're gonna keep it simple right now. I don't wanna like overwhelm people right now because that one's kind of choppy and this one's kind of like consolidating. These are my favorites. You can do the math for yourself on your GP. Resistance, support. That's it. <laughs> Sometimes I just trade with a line. Like I'll see a price come down, come up, I take it and then that's it, you know? but do not write anything into the chat right now so I could give you guys the trade setups. But the biggest tip I could give you guys is the fact of doing exactly what I said in the beginning. I focus heavily on the spiritual aspect is because the truth is a lot of you guys already know the answer to this. A lot of you guys already know how to trade. The truth is every single one of you guys is equipped that have been doing this for a while. You guys know the same basic technicals. There's nothing different. There's nothing crazy. It's a fact of applying it. And the only thing that's stopping us is if you look at every single trade that you've taken that you've lost, it was either revenge trading, it was either over leveraging, it was, and it all had to do with improper risk management. Am I right or am I right? You blew your account before it went into the direction that you're going to. Over leveraging everything. That's it. There's like, there's no secret to it. So it's like, it's crazy because it's simplicity at its finest. It's like, when you think about this, you guys know that I've been doing London sessions since like the beginning of when they had, like when they re re relaunched IML, I forgot what month it was. So think about how every single day, do you know how much homework I did to make sure that, do you, do you understand how much at first, not, not anymore, cause I'm confident how much pressure it was in the beginning to do that? It was, so I spent hours Think about that for majority of, for, for everyone here, I spend more hours on top of the studying, but I'm on the session. So I'm obligated to even be in the charts every single day because I have to teach. So what it does is what it allowed me to have this subconscious mindset and see the repetition factor into the patterns and saw is break the ceilings and test the floor. Proper risk would have solved everything. But the truth is that's the main reason why people will never, ever, 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 ever be successful in this is because people aren't willing to pay their dues from the beginning, you know what I'm saying? They're not willing to pay their dues from the first part. You want to invest 5,000 and do it, trade with a what? For every, um, for every thousand as a 0 0.10, so 0 0.50, once you make 5,000, withdraw the 5,000 again. You know what I mean? So that way you're not, you have your money back and it continue from there. That's just the whole main point in the first place because this stuff becomes super fun because imagine trading two to 3% on a $100,000 account, doing 10 standards, 30 to 50 picks is you're making a three to $5,000 every single day. And that's only if you're doing 30 to 50 pips. What happens if you get a hundred, 200 and you continue along with the trend? What happens when you do that? You get a hundred pips. That's another $10,000. You know saying? Like the math there is that's your $10 days. You know what I mean? Or $10 days, $10,000 days because you're, you're doing things the right way. You know, everybody follow me who here, Got some value from this. I want to put you guys onto. Who here got value from the Forex training and everything? We have like what? One, two, three pairs pulled up. Breakthroughs, breakthroughs, breakthroughs. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Sweet. So I'm going to lead off of that. Just make sure you guys do the homework aspect behind everything. This is recorded, so you could rewatch re the recording, but everyone. I want to give it back to, to, to Matt Green for, for him setting this up. You know, it means a lot when you have a leader that's looking for the best interest. And, you know, a lot of people could have this type of support. All they do is ask. You know, so I'm going to be working with Matt directly and all you guys directly. So make sure that you guys uh, 
utilize this and take advantage of this as much as possible. And now that you guys experienced the first time that we're doing this, you guys could be able to edify these calls when we do these calls. Because we could do this once a week, you know, if, if you guys want to. You know what I mean? On top of the marketing stuff too, like I can do that too as well. So it's like, it's all there, you know, just utilize me. And I want to build a direct, you know, relationship with you guys. Cause here's the thing. I'm going to be transparent. I've seen you guys' names constantly. I've seen you guys and I've seen our ups and our downs. And for a lot of us, there's no reason why we shouldn't be six or seven figure traders two to three years in, the, in, in trading, you know, and there's no reason for the people that have been in this IML for a minute that we shouldn't be chairman. You know what I mean? So it's like, I see the names in here and there's a lot of people that have a lot of potential. It's just that missing piece. You know, this could be the missing piece for the trading side and maybe I could also help with the missing piece for the marketing side because I could do a trading call a week, a freaking marketing call, whatever is necessary. Because I told Matt when I was out there in, in Miami that I wanted to work directly. I feel like I chased down his number. I was hitting up everybody like, yo, what's up? <laughs> Hit up Amy, Hua, Matt. What's Matt Green's number? <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it's true though you <laughs> say but uh I appreciate you guys bro we are so grateful for you man that was that was a a ton of value brother thank you so much for your time for for coming on here and just like letting us know man we're a ton of breakthroughs here and uh bro we hope to be able to keep doing this man because we're all grateful for your time once again bro. for sure well, i appreciate every single one of you guys you guys have the recording on this so send it to your squads and I love you guys. I'm going to hit the gym before the session. Much love, everybody. Have a fantastic evening. I appreciate you hopping on. Chris, thank you once again. Have a good night, everybody. Peace.